very good afternoon. I am Shilpa and I welcome you all to the CIET NCERT live phoneme program. Today's session is going to be the fourth part of cell structure. In the previous session of cell structure, we had understood, as you can see on the screen, nuclear membrane, what is nucleoplast and nucleotide. And today we shall discuss about what are chromosomes and about cytoplasmic ornaments. And with us we have Professor Animesh Kumar Mohapatra from RLE NCERT Bhutanishwar. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Silpa. Uh, so, as we previously also had one session on cell structure. So, to the viewers, if you could just recapitulate a bit. Yeah. Good afternoon, all viewers. In the last class, we discussed about the structure of the nucleus. As you know, the nucleus has four components, the nuclear membranes, nucleoplasm, and these are the chromatin fibers. Now, in the last class, we discussed about the nuclear membranes. We also discussed about nucleoplasm and nucleolus. Today, we'll discuss what are these thread-like structures, that is chromatin, what is chromosome, what are different types of chromosome, what is the structure of chromosomes. Okay, so before going to that, let me tell you, when a cell divides, say so this is a cell, when a cell divides, the nucleus first divides to form two daughter nuclei, which is followed by the division of the cytoplasm, and it results in the formation of two daughter cells. These daughter cells, they do not divide immediately again. They enter into a period during which they synthesize various substances, they grow in size, they undergo maturation, and again almost become double in size, which will again divide. So this period between two successive divisions is called interphase. So that is why in this picture, it is written interphase nucleus. So, let us study the interphase nucleus. In interphase, inside nucleus in the nucleoplasm will be present thin thread-like structures, which are chromatin or you can say chromatin fibers. This chromatin or chromatin fibers are nucleoprotein fibers. They are nucleoprotein fibers because they contain nucleic acids and proteins. Hence, they are called nucleoprotein fibers. Now again, during interphase, we have seen in the diagram that they are in the form of thin thread-like structures. They are in the form of thin, that is thread-like structures. So if you look at this picture, this is interphase, nu interphase nucleus. And inside interphase nucleus is present thin thread-like structures which are called chromatin fibers or chromatin. This is chromatin fibers. The chromatin fibers appear beaded thread-like structures. So they are having bead-like structures which you will study in class 12 they are nucleosomes. Now during cell division these chromatin fibers undergo that is condensation. They coil 
and become like this they will coil and become short thick rod like structures which are called chromosomes. That means in interface it is present in the form of thin thread like structures but during the beginning of the division, dividing phase they undergo condensation and become short thick rod like structures which are called chromosomes. So this is how condensation is going on. Now again if we go this fiber this is chromatin fibers and this is becoming rod like structure that is chromosome. What are different parts of a chromosome? Why the what chromosome contains? Now chromosomes contains you can see here this is the structure of chromosome is in the form of a rod like structure. Now each chromosome is having a narrow or constricted region which is called primary constriction or centromere. Now in the primary constriction you will find small disc like structure composed of proteins called kinetochores. Now what is the function of kinetochores? Kinetochores are the binding sites of that attachment of spindle fibers. During cell division the chromosomes will move to the opposite poles and this is brought about by the spindle fibers. So that is at the primary constriction is present centromeres as sorry at the primary constriction is present kinetochore and kinetochores are the binding site of microtubules or that is uh, spindle fibers. Now due to the presence of this primary constriction each chromosome is having two arms. This is one arm and this is another arm. Now during cell division when the each chromosome you will see having two rod like structures. These two rod like structures are called chromatids and these two chromatids are held together at the primary constriction or centromeres. So here I am showing it is in the form of a single rod like structure and here I am having that is two rod like structures. What is this actually? When this chromatin fiber is undergoing condensation during interface it undergo duplication. Actually there will be it will be like this. There are two thread like structures and when they undergo condensation because of tight helical coiling they become rod like structures. And these two fibers are present very close to each other so that is why they are appearing as single rod like structure. But as the division proceeds you will see these two rod like structure they become distinct from each other and they are called chromatids or you can say they are called sister chromatids. The, because these two chromatids will be identical in all respects. So we say they are sister that is chromatids. So now this region we can say this is narrow region primary constriction and at the primary constriction we are having kinetochores. In addition to primary constrictions some chrom chromosome may have some additional constrictions. These constrictions are called secondary constrictions. Secondary constriction as you can see here in this picture this is primary constriction and this is a secondary constriction and this is a secondary constriction. A chromosome may have one or more secondary constrictions. But in some chromosomes you will see the portion of the chromosome beyond the secondary constriction is in the form of a small sphere like structure which are called satellites. And a chromosome having satellites are called that is sat chromosome.
it is called sat chromosome. So, this is also a secondary constriction, this is also a secondary constriction. So, number of secondary constriction in a chromosome for a particular chromosome of a species is constant. These secondary constrictions helps in the identification of chromosomes. But as I said, in some chromosomes beyond the secondary constriction, the portion of the chromosome will be in the form of a small ball like structure or sphere like structure which are called satellite. And these satellites remain attached to the chromatid by thin filaments. And these chromosomes are called sat chromosomes. Now again we can see this is the tip of the chromosomes. The rounded tip of the chromosomes are called telomeres. Now this tip of the chromosomes that is telomere is having a specific DNA called telomeric DNA and covered by proteins called telomeric proteins. Now what is the function of telomere? Suppose if you remove this portion telomere, then there is possibility that the chromosomes may stick to each other. Join, they may join end to end. That means this telomere maintains the individuality of the chromosome. They prevent sticking up chromosomes end to end joining of the chromosomes. So, I told you a chromosome is having primary constriction, then there is secondary constrictions. Some chromosomes are having satellite, then the rounded tip of the chromosomes are called that is telomeres, right. So, this is about the. Sir, before you proceed, we have received few questions from See, the viewers. Please ask. Yes. Manish, he is asking, uh, what is the purpose of uh, changing of chromatid chromosomes? Okay. Very good question. Flex. As in this picture, I showed you in this picture, this is interface nucleus. So, in this nucleus, the chromosomes are present in the form of what? Long, thin, thread-like structures. This is chromatin fibers. Imagine in case of human being, there are 46 chromosomes. So there will be 46 long, thin, thread-like structures. Now during cell division, what will happen? If these chromosomes will be in the form of th thread-like structures, then during cell division, out of 46 chromosomes, each chromosome is having two rod like structures. So, these two chromatids will separate from each other. They will become daughter chromosome. This will move to one pole. So, this, uh, this is one example I am taking. The two chromatids during division separate from each other and this will move to this pole and this will move to this pole. Right. So, if the these chromosomes will be in the form of thin thread like structures, they will be entangled. So, it will not be easy for them to segregate, they may break. So, to become distinct, they undergo condensation so that they will segregate and they will become distinct from each other and it will be easy for them to move to the opposite poles. So, that is why during interphase, they are in the form of thread like structures. In the beginning of the cell division, that is during prophase, which we will study after this prophase, they are undergoing condensation and attending this structure. Again, at the end of cell division, again this will again convert into this form. These chromosomes, rod like structures, will again undergo decondensation to become thin thread like structures. Now, question is as you asked, uh, as Manish raised that question, what is the necessity then? Why all, always the chromatin fibers will not be present in this form? Now, this thread, thread like structures, chromatin fibers are undergoing condensation to become this. That means they are tightly coiled, as you can see in this picture. This chromatin fiber is undergoing tight coiling. If the chromatin fibers will remain in this state, that means they are exposed, the sites are exposed for the binding of various enzymes and proteins. As you know, it contains DNA, DNA contains genes, so genes will be expressed. But if they will be in the condensed form, then the binding sites for various enzymes of replication, various enzymes of transcription, so all regulatory proteins 
will not bind to this because those binding sites will be closed, blocked. So in order to undergo expression of the genes, they need to undergo opening or decondensation so that they will be in this form. So in, when they are in the form of thin thread like structures, chromatin fiber, gene expression is taking place. Genes are expressed by the binding of enzymes and proteins. But when they are in this form, there will be no expression of the genes because the binding sites will be covered. Okay. So here I am telling that. So naturally that means that is a cyclic process is going on. Chromatin fibers are converted into chromosomes. Again towards the end of cell division, it is again undergoing decondensation to become this chromatin fiber. This is called chromosomal cycle. So it is a cyclic process to regulate the, that is cell division. Am I clear? Yeah. Can, any condition that chromosome changes to chromatin fibers again, though you have to change it, but maybe yeah. it will like huh. See, these chromatin fibers, if I go little inside, these are thin beaded thread like structures. These beads are nucleosomes. And these are, that is, your DNA control proteins are there. Now, during cell division, they, it is in the, this form in the interface. But during cell division, when the cell enters into karyokinesis, you know, you will come to know karyokinesis are four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So, during prophase, this condensation process starts. Number of proteins are involved. So, the, with the help of this protein, this condensation is taking place. So that each chromatin fiber will undergo condensation to become this rod-like structure called that is chromosome. So that they will easily be arranged around the sp spindle apparatus and they will segregate to the two poles, opposite poles. But if they will be in this form, they will be entangled with each other. So they will not be easily separate from each other to move to the opposite poles. So they, there is every possibility that chromatin fibers will break. Again at the end of that is cell division that is karyokinesis when the cell enters into last phase that is telophase, this process again reverse the decondensation takes place. Again this is on coiling takes place. Due to this on coiling this cross structure will be converted again to this structure because in the interface there will be maximum gene expression. When the chromatin fiber, that is chromosomes are in the form of chromatin fibers, right? Right. Okay. So, may I take one more question? Sure, sure. Yeah. And Menika, she is asking that, uh, ki, sir, other microscopes under rakhte hai, chromatin fibers or chromosomes, so, so hame kaise pata chalega ki kaun sa constriction hai? And the second question ki hai, she has asked hai ki, Secondary construction, you said the identification of chromosomes may work karta hai. What about the primary construction? Yeah. Listen, the first part of the question that is first part is that is, you say that is you asked primary, there are two types of constrictions. One is primary constrictions and the other one is secondary constriction. Now, every chromosome is having a primary constriction. There may be secondary constriction, there may not be secondary constriction in a chromosome. But primary, at the primary constriction, which is also called centromere, the two chromatids are held together. Each chromosome is having two chromatids and the two chromatids are held together at the primary constriction. And in the primary constriction, there are protein discs are present, kinetochore. In secondary constriction, there will be no kinetochores. So this way, you can differentiate between primary constriction and secondary constriction that during cell division, the spindle fibers will bind to the primary constriction because kinetochore is present in the primary constriction. And spindle fibers will not bind to secondary constriction as there is no kinetochore in the secondary constrictions. The second part will come. The number of secondary constriction in a chromosome vary. It may be one it may be more than one. Again, the number of secondary constriction 
in a particular chromosome of a species is constant. For example, if my first chromosome is having two secondary constriction, your first chromosome is also having two secondary constriction. That means this secondary constriction helps in the identification of chromosomes. We have already mapped all the chromosomes, which chromosome is having how many cons secondary constrictions. So based on that, and this position of the secondary constriction is also constant for a particular chromosome of a species. That means from that, we can identify whether it is first chromosome or it is 17th chromosome or it is 21st chromosome. So depending upon the number of secondary constriction and position of the secondary constriction, we can identify the, that is chromosomes. Then all the secondary constrictions are not having satellite. Only some of the secondary constriction beyond which the small portion of the nucleus is in the form of a sphere-like structure are, which are called satellite, they are called sat chromosome. And these secondary constrictions are also called nuclear organizer. Nucle which we have studied nucleolus in the last class, the nucleolus remain associated with the secondary constriction of specific chromosomes, which are called nuclear chromosomes. Why this secondary constriction is called nuclear organizer? Because nucleolus which remains associated, you know nucleolus will disintegrate at the beginning of the division, ag again reappears at the end of the nuclear division. So this, that means the secondary constriction is involved in the reorganization of the nucleolus. And this region contains ribosomal RNA genes, tRNA genes, so many genes are present. La last class we discussed about what is the function of nucleolus. So nucleolus is the site of biogenesis of ribosome. So it's not only involved in the tr transcription of ribosomal RNA, it also the site of transcription of transfer RNA or tRNA. So now we can say secondary constrictions will be two types. Some secondary constrictions are that is helping in the identification, so which are actually will go next when we discuss about the heterochromatin. So some secondary constrictions are having satellite next to them. So those chromosomes which are having satellite are called sat chromosomes. So this is the basic difference between a primary constriction and a secondary constriction. So when you see a cell under a light microscope, it will be very difficult for you to see that is secondary constrictions and primary constriction. You need a powerful microscope to see this second primary constriction and that is secondary constrictions. So with the microscope which we are using in schools that is uh, light microscope, it will be that is magnifying power is maximum is uh, 100 or it can go up to 400. If you are using eyepiece of 40, uh, the objective of 40x and eyepiece of 10x, then maximum it will go to 400 times magnification. So it will be a little difficult. But you can see them if you are using little powerful microscope or if you are using oil immersion, then you can see it, these constrictions. Well, uh, so Silpa, should I proceed? That is, I think it is clear to the next. Yeah. Now, again we can see here, this chromatin fibers, as we again we can discuss, this chromatin fibers you can see here, this is chromatin fiber, it is undergoing condensation, beginning of the cell cycle, it is a condensing. Then during cell type cycle, what is happening again see, each chromosome is having two chromatids, so during cell division, the two chromatids of the chromosome segregate from each other or disjunction takes place. They separate from each other so that this will move to one pole, this will go to the other pole. So in our case, we are having 46 chromosomes. So all the 46 chromosomes get arranged along the equatorial line and the, all that is kinetochores will be present here. The spindle fibers get attached to kinetochore. Then separation takes place, chromatid separation takes place. When the two chromatids of a chromosome separate from each other, they are called daughter chromosomes. So they, now these daughter chromosomes moves to the opposite pole. So when they move to the opposite pole, that means this is the cell, one set reaches here, 
and one set reaches here. Right? So each was having two chromatids. So this will move to this pole, this goes to this pole. So each pole receives, that is, chromosomes. Again, nuclear membrane reappears around this group of chromosomes at each pole. Then these daughter chromosomes, which are in the form of rod-like structure, they undergo decondensation to again become thin thread-like structures. So the, in the last stage, that is way, which is called telophase, in the telophase, again decondensation of chromosome takes place to become chromatin fibers. So that is why I told you, this is a cyclic process which is going on. Cyclic process which is, go which is going on. This chromatin fiber is undergoing condensation to become chromosome and again the chromosome is undergoing decondensation to become, that is chromatin fibers. Now, when this decondensation is taking place, that means when condensation was going on, you can see they are tightly coiled. That means when decondensation will take place, they will uncoil. So in interface, what happens? The some regions of the, this is in, in interface, some regions of the chromatin fiber still remains tightly coiled. They will be darkly stained. They do not open up. They remain in interface. They remain tightly. So this region, tightly coiled and darkly stained regions are called heterochromatin. But some portion of the chromatin fiber during this decondensation, they open up and they are less tightly coiled and they will be lightly stained and which will be called that is euchromatin. That means a chromatin fiber will have two regions, two different regions. That is, these are heterochromatin and this is euchromatin. Is it clear to you, Shilpa, that is what, that is chromatin fiber is having, that is two regions, heterochromatin and euchromatin. But as you know, in interphase, the DNA will undergo replication. So when they will undergo replication, that means they have to undergo total uncoiling. If it is tightly coiled, DNA replication will not take place. So then if heterochromatin is remaining tightly coiled, then how it will undergo replication? So that is why we have said this is say period during which replication takes place, which is known as A stage. Euchromatin undergo replication in the early stage and heterochromatin undergo replication in the late stage. That means we simply we can say that euchromatin is early replicating chromatin and heterochromatin is late replicating chromatin. Now, chromosome contains DNA. As we all know, DNA contains genes and genes are responsible for the expression of characters. For every character in our body, there are genes are present. And already you know, Human Genome Project has identified there are about 30,000 genes in the human genome. But out of that 30,000 genes, 20 to 25,000 genes are protein coding genes. They encode proteins. They contain information for the proteins. Rest are for different types of RNA molecules. Now, if they remain tightly coiled, earlier I have told you why they are undergoing decondensation so that they will open up. Then enzymes, regulatory proteins will bind to specific sites so that they can undergo replication, they can undergo transcription. But if it is remaining tightly coiled, so this enzyme binding and protein by regulatory protein binding sites are not exposed. So that means the genes which are present in this region will not be expressed. But in general, we can say the heterochromatin is, that is, contains very less genes. And there is poor gene expression in the region of the heterochromatin. But euchromatin contains more genes and which are expressed readily. So that means chromatin fiber is having two regions. One is heterochromatin and the other is euchromatin. When you go again little higher, if you'll come to know heterochromatin, maybe again two types. One is constitutive heterochromatin and the other one is facultative heterochromatin. The constitutive heterochromatin 
is fixed in their position and in the chromosome also. So they contain repeated DNA sequences. DNA, you know, made up of four types of nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine. So that is constitutive heterochromatin contains repetitive DNA sequences. And these constitutive heterochromatins are mainly conf that is conf confined to which region of the cell? They are around the centromere and telomeres. This is this region of mostly that is constitutive heterochromatins are present in this region. But the other one is that is facultative, hetero, facultative heterochromatin. Facultative heterochromatin are not permanently that is or they are not fixed. In some cells they are readily undergoing expression, genes are undergoing expression. In some cells they remain inactive. The best example I can give you, have you heard of bar bodies? You must have uh, heard that in females, in female human being, there are two X chromosomes. And one X chromosome remain act inactive in the heterochromatin stage. So during sexual reproduction, when a male gamete and a female gamete fuse with each other, Suppose the, the female gamete will be having one X chromosome and male gamete will be suppose having one X chromosome. Then the two gametes fuse, the zygote will be having two X chromosome. The zygote having two X chromosome means the zygote will develop into a female child, right? One of the X chromosome remains inactive in a heterochromatin stage that is called bar body. So when there are two X chromosomes, one is coming from the father, one is coming from the mother, that means can I say this is paternal X chromosome and this is maternal X chromosome. It is not that only a particular X chromosome will become inactive in all the cells of our body. In some cells, a paternal X chromosome is inactive, becoming bar body. In some cells, maternal X chromosome is inactive and becoming bar body. So it is random. That means this shows that this, that means an example of facultative heterochromatin which is not permanent. In some cells they will be actively expressing, in some cells they will remain that is inactive. So this is some differences between the constitutive heterochromatin and facultative heterochromatin. Okay. Say, as I told you, this chromosome in the chromosome, there is a narrow region which is called primary constriction or centromere. Depending upon the position of the centromere, we can classify chromosomes into four different types. Now look at this picture. So you can see here, depending upon the position of the centromere, there are four types of chromosomes. Metacentric chromosome, submetacentric chromosome, acrocentric chromosome and telocentric chromosome. I have kept two two pictures side by side because I told you chromosome will appear as a rod like structure in the beginning of the cell division but as cell division proceeds the two chromatids are becoming distinct. So that is why I kept both pictures side by side. In the metacentric chromosome you can see here in the picture the centromere is located at the middle. When centromere is located at the middle then what will happen? The two arms of the chromosome will be equal in size. So metacentric chromosome. Next one is submetacentric chromosome. In submetacentric chromosome, the centromere is little away from the middle. Centromere is not exactly in the middle, it is away from the middle. So due to which one arm of the chromosome is smaller and one arm of the chromosome is longer. This smaller arm is known as P arm and the long arm is called Q arm. That is, these are, that is, P means that is petite, petite means which is small and Q that is long arm. So that means in submetacentric chromosome, this one is smaller, in arm is smaller in size, one is longer. In third one that is acrocentric chromosome, acrocentric chromosome you will see the centromere is present 
near the that is terminal end not exactly at the terminal end near the terminal end so due to this position of the centromere primary constriction one arm is very small and one arm is very long so what is difference between submetacentric then acrocentric in acrocentric centromere is present away from the middle but in acrocentric it is present that is near to the terminal end and in telocentric chromosome the chromosome is located at the terminal end so when it is present at the terminal end telocentric chromosome that means there is only one that is arm is present and there will be a small body which will be a satellite like structure will be present so based on the position of the centromere we have classified chromosomes into four types metacentric submetacentric acrocentric telocentric now here you may ask a question in case of human being there are 23 pairs of chromosomes and or 46 chromosomes so some of the chromosomes will be metacentric some of the chromosomes will be submetacentric some of the chromosomes will be acrocentric we don't have telocentric chromosomes now if you ask me then which chromosomes will be metacentric which chromosomes will be submetacentric and which chromosomes will be acrocentric chromosome number 1 3 16 19 and 20 these are metacentric chromosomes in case of human being i am talking about human being in this submetacentric chromosome is 2 4 to 12 then 17 18 and x chromosome these are submetacentric then coming to the acrocentric chromosome that is 13 14 15 21 22 and y chromosome these are acrocentric chromosome and we don't have telocentric chromosome so this in case of human being now let us go back little bit nucleolus as i told you Sir, one question here yeah Why the position of centromere is different in a different chromosome? Does it has any significance? Yeah. Now, what is the centromere or primary constriction? The centromere or primary constriction, where there is, we have heterochromatic regions. Now, as I told you, if we when decondensation is taking place. this decondensis during this decondensation some regions are remaining tightly coiled some regions are remaining less tightly coiled the tightly coiled regions have specific dna base sequences dna sequences specific dna sequences and to this specific dna sequences so this will vary from chromosome to chromosome it is not that heterochromatin of all the chromosome is present at the same place or euchromatin of all the chromosome is present at the same place so this heterochromatic region and euchromatic region varies from place to place as i told you constitutive heterochromatin is present around the primary constriction so wherever constitutive heterochromatin will be present then there will be primary constriction or centromere will be located and in this region the dna which is present it is very specific to this dna only the kinetochore will bind why kinetochore is uh, this protein dis to which spindle fibers get attached why they are not getting as a secondary secondary constriction because kinetochore remain associated with the specific dna sequence that is present only in the primary constriction so depending upon the that is position of this heterochromatic region and euchromatic region the primary constriction varies from chromosome type to chromosome type or that is first chromosome second chromosome third like this it varies am i clear yes well, sir yeah. yes sir we are left with only 5 minutes oh my god yes oh so now we'll go uh this is heterochromatic what is this chromosome contains chromosome is composed of dna it contains very small amount of rna large amount of proteins well if you say that is typical chromosome contains 35 to 40% dna 3 to 5% rna then maximum is proteins now there are 
two types of proteins you can see that is major protein is histone proteins. Again we come here to this picture you can see here as we will be discussed that these are beaded threads. What are these beads? These are nucleosomes. These nucleosomes contain histone proteins. When you will go to class 12 you will study there are different types of histone proteins. These histone proteins assemble to form these structures around which DNA is coiled. So, this histone proteins together with this DNA segment forms a nucleosome and this DNA between two nucleosomes is called linker's DNA. So, that means it contains DNA, it contains large amount of proteins which I said histone proteins. In addition to this histone proteins there is also non-histone proteins. What is the role of non-histone proteins? Non-histone proteins helps in the packaging process. They act as enzymes non-histone proteins, but major is that is histone proteins. So, DNA, RNA, histones and non-histone proteins. Now, can you see this picture? This is all the chromosomes as I told you there are 46 chromosomes are present. Now, these chromosomes can be of uh, divided into two types. Now, the 22 pair of chromosomes, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 pairs of chromosome contain genes which are responsible for the expression of the body characters, somatic characters, color of the hair, length of the hair, shape of the hair, color of the skin, color of the eye, all these are that is somatic characters that is controlled by genes present in the autosomes. But the last pair of chromosome, in case of female it is present X, X, 2 X chromosome, 2 homomorphic X chromosome, but in case of males there is only 1 X chromosome and 1 Y chromosome. These are called sex chromosomes. Now, sex chromosomes contain that means contain genes for the determination of the sex. You may say whether that is sex chromosome contain genes only for the determination of the sex or do they have genes for any other character? Yes sex chromosomes not only carrying genes containing genes for determination of sex, they are also containing genes for some autosomal characters and but these genes are transmitted off from the one generation to another generation along with this sex determining genes. So, that is why they are called sex linked genes. When you go to class 12 you will study how these sex linked genes are inherited from one generation to another generation. The number of chromosomes is also constant for a species. As I said we have that is 46 chromosomes and 46 chromosomes we are also mentioning it as 23 pairs of chromosomes. Why 46 chromosomes are also mentioned as 23 pairs of chromosomes? Because there are from each type of chromosome we are having two two. One is coming from the father, one is coming from the mother. So, these form a pair of chromosome and similar chromosomes are called homologous chromosome. And when a cell contains two sets of chromosomes then it is called a diploid cell, but when it contains a single set of chromosome so it is called a haploid cell. But sometimes what happens that due to some abnormality a cell may also contain more than two sets of chromosome then they are called polyploid cells. So, when you uh, that is go to class 12, you will study various genetic disorders, abnormality in the chromosome number like Down syndrome, then Klinefelter syndrome, then Patau syndrome, Edward syndrome. So, these are that is due to change in that is chromosome number abnormality which occurs during cell division. The lowest number of chromosome has been reported by a flat worm mesotorma where there is only somatic cells are having four chromosomes. But among animals, the maximum number of chromosomes so far recorded is in a crab Eupagoras crotensis, which has 254 chromosomes or 127 pairs of chromosomes. This is among animals. So, this is you can see sex chromosomes and this is autosomes. Last is what is the function of chromosomes? Chromosomes first is that is as we start go back to Mendelism, Mendel that is observed that characters are transferred from one generation to another generation. That means, chromosomes carry genetic material, it carries the genetic material from one generation to another 
generation because it contains DNA. DNA contains genes and DNA is the genetic material. So chromosomes also is involved in the process of variation and heredity, evolution of new species because if there is any change takes place in the DNA, it leads to uh, development of new characters. And chromosomes contain DNA, DNA contains genes and genes are responsible for the synthesis of various enzymes and proteins which regulate various physiological and biochemical processes. Chromosome contains genes and genes also regulate the process of growth of the organism and division of the cells. As just now we discussed there are sex chromosomes which contains sex determining genes. So chromosome contains genes which determine the sex of an individual. And Lastly, we can say chromosome also helps in the, that is, identification of the species. I am having 46 chromosomes, that is, some animals is having 48 chromosomes, some are having 42 chromosomes, some that is, if you go to frog, 22 chromosomes, 26 chromosomes. So chromosome number varies from, uh, that is, species to species. And this chromosome helps in the identification and we can study this evolution also through the by studying the chromosomes. So what we discussed today, so far we have discussed including the previous class, position of the nucleus, shape, size of the nucleus, depending upon the number of nuclei, how many types of cells are there. Then we discussed the structure of the nucleus, that is nuclear membrane, nucleoplasm, nucleolus, chromatin, how this chromatin is getting Trans converted to chromosome and how this chromosome is getting converted to chromatin. The details we'll study that is how this acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation is taking place that helps in the condensation and decondensation of chromosome, types of chromosomes and heterochromatin, euchromatin. Lastly, we discuss functions of chromosomes. Thank you, Silpa. If there is any question, you may ask me. So we have received several questions, sir, but we will try to address them in our another session. Okay. And for today, what we have understood, what are chromatin fibers and how it condenses to form chromosomes and how in particular phase they decondense to form chromatin fibers again. And also we understood about the types of chromosomes like metacentric, submetacentric, exocentric and telocentric. And thank you so much, sir, for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next session is going to be...